Kelly Breen back at Barn 68. Kelly, nice third place finish yesterday for Andiamo. How the horse come out of the race? He looks good. Came out well. Coming into this meet, you have horses all over the North Atlantic coast from Laurel all the way up to Saratoga. What are your plans for this summer? Are you going to bring more up here? Are you going to be focusing down in Jersey? You know, I, I have some horses uh, that I think will fit good here at Saratoga, but I guess I have my main stable is at Monmouth Park, and, uh, you know, we're I guess we're tied for leading trainer or something that's there. Uh, just trying to put horses in the right spots, if I can keep these bugs away from me at Saratoga, I'll be all right. Besides Andiamo, any other two-year-olds that you're excited about? Um, no, I have a couple of horses, um, but I think by far right now he was our gem, and we'll see him. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll take the next step against New York Reds at the end of the meet. Uh, maybe use that as a stepping stone to the champagne, something like that. I'm not sure. In due time's out on the farm. Any plans on bringing him back to Saratoga this summer? Uh, he will not make this summer. We have uh, him, um, uh, yes this time, another nice promising colt we give some time off to. So we're going to have a little bit of a, a dry time, but at the same time, you know, the regular meat and potatoes, claimers, stuff like that, will are going to fill in for us. Thank you very much for your time. You got it. Back here at Barn 4 with Robbie Falcone Jr. Robbie, you had a second place finish yesterday with answer in. The horse got claimed away from you. Great horse. Um, Coming into the Saratoga 2022 meet, you know, what are you most excited about? I'm really just getting up here with uh, a lot more horses than I usually, you know, normally have. Usually we have around 12 to 16. This year we have 30. So I'm um, hopefully being more active um, racing-wise. We can run more races, hopefully win more races. And um, claiming. The expansion of your stable, what, what do you attribute that to? I think just, uh, you know, all the hard work that gets put in, it gets recognized when owners come by the barn and, you know, look at the horses physically and, you know, the way they run in the racetrack. Um, I think that has a lot to do with it. You know, we work hard just like everybody else, you know, everybody else does, but, uh, you know, you get the right opportunities and um, you got to make the most of them. Any two-year-olds on the barn that you're excited about? I have a handful, actually. I have a mind chef from Europe where that's working pretty good right now. I have an Intermischief Philly. Um, that me and John Grassi bought at the March sale, and she's working uh, really well right now. They're actually working later today on the grass. And then I um, also have the one of my first claims I made was uh, Rummel Doll, and I actually have her first foal, so she's here too. Keep it in the family, I like that. Yeah. You have some horses here, some at Monmouth. What's your plans for the summer, back and forth? Yeah, you know, I've, I have horses uh, here, and I have horses at Belmont as well, so you just have to you know, split time in between. I have the majority of them here. So, you know, you have to drive back, uh, you know, a couple of times a week. But uh, it's all right. It's fun. It's a good problem to have. One of the smaller barns, one of the smaller barns out here, there's some really large barns. Some of the guys have been saying, you know, they're having to work extra hard to stay competitive. What are you doing to stay competitive with these larger barns? Really the same thing we've always been doing. You know, as you came in here, I was, I was doing a stall, you know. Um, but you just have to just work hard, have the right team around you, have the right horses around you, and, you know, spot them, you know, in the right spots. Best of luck to you on this meet. Thank you. Back at Barn 80 <clears throat> with Miguel Clement. Nice start to the meet. Kinesi and City Man had those two horses come out of the race. Both came back in good order. It was a good, fun way to start the meet, that's for sure. Um, are either of them decided where they're going to be pointed to next? No, all options are on the table. I believe Kinesi will be pointing to the Oaks. The question is which one? You have the Saratoga Oaks. You have the Virginia Oaks at Colonial. You also have the Delmar Oaks. So just reassess the Philly, how she's doing, but she'll be pointing to something nice and hopefully something major in the coming weeks. You're up here training with your father. Talk, talk to me about how special that is up at Saratoga. Uh, it's, um, it's great, to be honest with you. Dad and I work very well together, and uh, we love horses. We love racing. This is a great time of the year. So. Uh, as long as the horses run well, life is great. Gufo back on the work tab at Belmont. Uh, where's pointed to next? A strong possibility of be running this weekend at the uh, United Nations at Monmouth. I believe Joel Rosario will go over there for the mounts. And um, let's just try to get lucky, I guess. Last question for you here. Big invasion today in the quick call. Uh, cutting back from seven to five and a half. Any concern with that type of cutback? No, with the good horses like him, you don't have to worry about the distance and such. Last time we ran him seven furlongs, we were a bit worried about the distance. Uh, he was able to overcome our fear. He's fast, he's without a doubt. Gulfstream 5.8, he was incredibly impressive. I know it's firm here today. Nevertheless, um, as long as you look after their well-being, good horses like him, 
be overcome anything. So just look after him. It's up to Joel and um, five, five and a half, six. It doesn't make a difference for him as long as he's doing well. It's up to him. Thank you for the time and good luck with the rest of the meet. Thanks for everything.